Uh, good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. I'm just here because I wanted to give you a code review on Kaggles Season 3, Episode 6 Playground Competition. And it's based on the Paris house prices, which I've never seen the Paris house price data set. So it was nice to work on a data set that I have never seen before. And so and so basically, I ran the computer program up the first time in linear regression, and I didn't score very well on linear regression. So I decided I'd try XGBoost and see how I scored on XGBoost. And my um, score improved considerably with XGBoost. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the code review so you can see the code review. So the first thing you can see is my score, my best score um, on um, CACO, and it was a, a, a 208, 293 was the best score, but so it had a lot of error in it. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to talk about the problem statement for this competition question. The data set for this competition, both train and test, was generated from a deep learning model trained on the Paris housing price prediction feature. Feature distributions are close to, but not exactly the same as the original. Feel free to use the original data set as part of this competition, both to explore differences as well as see whether incorporating the original in training improves model performance. So I didn't include the original data set. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to import your libraries. So we're going to have NumPy as NP, so that's your uh, numerical computations. We're going to import pandas as PD, and that's your data processing, and to create data frames and series. We're going to import OS, which is your operating system. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT, which is your graphics, and we're going to import Seaborn as SNS, which is also your graphics. So we're going to use OS to go into the operating system and retrieve the files for this competition and the files are sample submission, train, and test CSV files. So we're going to use Pentas to read the files and then convert them to data frames. So we're going to convert them to the data frames called train, test, and submission. So you can see train here. It's got 18 columns of data with the last column being the price. And then we check the info. You can see that all of the columns are numeric columns, which means you don't have to encode anything. So that's good. And then we check to see if we've got any um, null values. And no, we don't have any null values. So that means we don't have to um, deal with null values either. So that's good. Check test. Test has 17 columns, and so it's missing the price column. And we check submission, and so this is the format that Kaggle wants to see when we submit our predictions. So we're going to analyze the target. So the first thing that we do is we check the do a disk plot of we use Seaborn to do a disk plot of the price. So you can see the, there's your price right there. And then what we do is we do a value counts to see if there are any values that are on, appear only once. And then if any values appear only once, it's no point even having them. And the reason why is because the uh, model is not going to be able to make predictions on um, a value if it's appeared only once. So what we're going to do is we're going to filter out all of the values that appear on once. So we're going to make train equals train brackets train dot group 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 by brackets price dot price dot transform brackets count is greater than one. So 
any value, any um, price that appears more than once will go into train but if it only appears once then it won't go into train because there's no point it, it's not going to um be able to make a prediction on something that's appeared only once so you'll see that now we only have 20,508 rows of data whereas we started out with 22,730 so it got rid of about 2,000 rows of data so about 2,000 rows of data appeared only once and so now what we do is we do SNS disk plot again to analyze it and so there's the analysis of it and you can see it still looks pretty close to what it had looked like before uh, did a scatter plot so we can compare the square meters to the price and so the square meters pretty much stayed pretty much the same but you got one outlier there and then we ch I did some box plots to check the number of rooms versus the price so you can see the number of rooms versus the price you can see that it very very slowly edges up the more rooms you have but there were quite a lot of rooms in some of those houses and so I wanted to do something that was a little more easy to read a little bit more easy to understand so we wanted to do a box plot on the prices compared to if it has a yard or if it doesn't have a yard and it was almost the same it was almost the same it was almost like there was no difference between if it has a yard or if it doesn't have a yard so now what we're going to do is we define our target which is the price and then we're going to create a data frame called combi which is train where we've dropped the target and we've appended test to it so now we've got the combi which is train and test added to each other we've got 35,682 rows of data let's just see something so it says there's an IND so that's one thing that I forgot to do is I forgot to drop the ID from it and I could in theory uh, drop the IED and see if my um, see if it will improve the score so let's just look and see what will happen let's try it see what happens see if it improves the score because you don't need extra extra columns if you don't need them and then the id every house had an id number and you don't need the id the reason why you don't need the id is because every row is um, indexed so we don't have the ID. So we've run it, so let's save it. So now we're just gonna save it. 
I just thought that since I haven't talked very a long time in this video and I thought since it's not a really complicated data set then maybe it would be okay to go ahead and do this while I'm making the video instead of saying oh well when I get off the video I'll change it so So it's done. Open in viewer. So we're gonna the settings is settings that's public. Submit it. See if it improved the score. Yep, it did improve my score by deleting the ID. So now let's check where I am on the leaderboard. So I'm number 12 on the leaderboard. So when I deleted the ID, it improved the score, which was good. So we'll go back. Go back to where we were for Combe. You can see we dropped the ID here. That's what we went through when we did it and we dropped our ID. And then so you can see that we don't have any missing values. So we don't have to deal with any missing values. We created the heat map. When we create the heat map, you can see that all of the columns have a low correlation to each other. This is your core, so you can check what the correlation is, just if you wanted to look at it numerically. We normalize the data, and when you normalize your data, you convert all of the cells to a value between 0 and 1. And the reason why is because it helps in the training, feeding, the training and feeding process when all of the values are really close together. So that's why we normalized it. We defined our variables x and y. x is your independent variables, and y is your dependent variables. So y equals target, x equals compy, brackets, colon, to the length of train, and x test equals compy, brackets, length of train, to the end. And now what we're going to do is we're going to split into training and validation sets. So we have to take the target and we have to add it to x. And then what we do is we take a sample of 90% and call that train. And then everything that isn't in that 90% sample is going to be in val. And then x train is going to be all of the columns except the last one. And y train is going to be the last column. x val is going to be exactly the same format. And then we check our shape. And you can see we've got 16 columns for x val and x no x train x val and x test and we have only zero one column for y train and y val so now we select our model and in this instance um, we're going to have um, xgb regressor because i tried linear regression first and the error was too high and so I decided to try a different model. We predict on the validation set. So you see we have a very good prediction. We measure our error, and our error is 231462. We compare the actual values to the predicted values. And then we plot it on a graph. You can see that there are a few outliers, but mostly most of the values are very good we predict on our test set and then we prepare 
our submission. So submission price equals prediction. And then we convert submission to a CSV. And then we read the CSV and we look at the submission. And these are our prices. And when we uh, then we submit it to Kaggle, we save it. And we, we save it and submit it to Kaggle. And you can see that I've submitted it to Kaggle uh, three times already today. And my best score is 185386. So that was my best score. So that's it for this code review. So in addition to going over the code, I decided to go ahead and delete the IND, which uh, improved my score. And so when it improved my score, um, I went up in the leaderboard. So that's good. So I hope you enjoyed this code review. You got me going over the code review. You got me editing the code and resubmitting my work and then having my code improved as well. So you got a lot out of this video. So if you like my video, please like, subscribe, share. Thank you to my subscribers for supporting my channel. And thank you for watching my video.